Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module of OS which is uh, related to process scheduling and in this we have 4 topics and 7 algorithms in the 5th topic so it's a very easy module if you watch this video till the end you can easily score more than 80% marks in the exam make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this without wasting any more time let's get started so the first is introduction to process what do you mean by a process okay so process means a way of doing something that is called as process like doing something is called as process so it is a program which is under the execution so if the program is running it is called as a process okay and the process memory is divided into four sections so when a process is being performed there is some memory associated with that that is divided into four sections okay so the first one is stack where we store the variables like uh, int a is equal to 5 so that a will be stored in the stack whichever the process requires variable that will be stored where it will be stored in the stack second is the heap it will store the dynamic memory allocation what we do the data section will have the global variables and the text section will have the uh, compiled code present so it will be as follows stack will be present here and the heap data and text will be present here the instructions will be present here okay this is how the process is in the memory this is a very very important question from exam point of view okay next moving on we have the process state and process control block what do you mean by process state the state of the process the process can be in very uh, many different states it can be either new process ready process running process waiting or terminated so let's understand what is the meaning of them new process means it is just not uh, started yet that it is uh, all the things are uh, ready and kept and ready is also the same thing new and ready and running means it is started running and the process is getting executed waiting means it is waiting for some input or output operation to happen and terminated means it's over okay so firstly a new process will be there in the new state then it will be in the ready state if it is uh, ready to start the execution then it will go to the running state and inside the running state will be running if any input or output comes it will go to the waiting state and again when it will be ready it will start running if there is an interrupt in between it will again come ready and it uh, and when that is over it, uh, it will go to the running back and if it is exit means it is terminated okay so this is the process states and very important question from exam point of view next we have the process control block what is control a process control block it shows the states of the information which uh, the process has so it can be like a process state whether it is a new ready or uh, running or waiting and so on program control will have how many uh, things are executed and which is the next instruction to execute cpu register will be there and cpu scheduling information which schedule is being used memory management information accounting information like the how much cpu is used and the real time usage IO information how much input and output happened for that particular process that information will be there okay next is the process scheduling uh, there are many processes okay now we have to schedule it which process will run first which process will uh, run after that and so on that is called as process scheduling and the process will be put in a job queue whenever it comes and it will be executed one by one so schedulers are the software which selects an available program to be assigned to the cpu okay so for scheduling the process we use schedulers there are three types long term scheduler which uh, chooses the uh, process from the job pool short term scheduler chooses from the memory and medium uh, scheduler chooses from the ready queue okay and medium uh, scheduler is the most used one so it will have an intelligence where it will select the uh, process which is not taking more cpu time and it is uh, fastly executed and so on so those uh, factors and parameters will be there which will be used in the selection for the uh, process okay and the process can be defined as either in input output bound process or cpu bound process okay input output spends more time in the input output operations cpu spends more time doing the tasks okay it means execution so the process can be either input or output or cpu and they switch in between like first input will happen then the cpu will process it then the second input will happen and so on context switching is the task of switching from one process to another process okay and uh, what are the operations on the process it may create several new process okay first there is a process it might create uh, several new process so this is called as a parent process and this is called as a child process a child process is created by a function called fork okay so it will fork the process and it will create a child process here exec will just execute the function which is currently pointed to wait will wait for the child process to get over get pid means get process id get ppid means get process uh, parent process id is used for returning the process id of the child and the uh, parent okay exit will exit the process so this is the diagram when we fork it a child will be uh, mean the child process will be there which will execute and then exit and the parent process will wait till it executes and then it will resume the normal process
Next, we have the uh, inter-process communication. From the five topics, the second one is inter-process communication. What do you understand by the term inter-process? This is P1, this is P2. In between P1 and P2, if there is a communication happening, that is called as inter-process communication. There are two such types, independent and cooperating process. Independent process will be independent of the uh, other process. It will not have any similarity in between. It will execute uh, independently. And cooperating process will have some data to be shared in between, and they will be cooperating with each other and executing the process. So cooperation is required for information sharing or computation speed up or modularity for dividing the task into different modules, small, small modules and convenience. Okay, so for these reasons, cooperation is there. And there are two models of IPC, the shared memory system, message passing system. Inter-process communication, there is one process, second process. How do they communicate with each other? By using two methods. First is shared memory system. In shared memory system, we will be having one shared memory location present here and each process will be able to access this one and uh, take the data and do the steps. And message passing system will have whenever a process wants some data, it will request to the other process and it will pass it. Okay, So that is sending and receiving. So uh, shared memory is a region of shared memory where the address space is uh, present and producer consumer problem can be solved using shared memory what is producer consumer problem there will be one producer there will be one consumer producer will produce and consumer will consume sometimes what happens is producer will pr uh, produce more items and the consumer will not have space to keep that item so some items will be lost if there is a shared memory what will happen processor producer will put all the data here and the consumer can take whenever it wants so the problem will be solved here Second is the message passing system. Here we will be sending and receiving the messages, whatever the data is required. And to create a link between a sender and the receiver, there are three ways. The first is the indirect or direct communication, which is by using naming. Some name will be present. This is the process A, this is the process B and so on. By the name, they will identify from where to send and where to receive. Second is synchronous or asynchronous communication. Okay, By using some sync of the time or asynchronous means if this process is over, next process will happen and so on. That sequence will be set. Okay, Based on that, Automatic or explicit buffering. We will be using the buffers to send the message and receive the message. Buffer is nothing but a space where the messages will be stored. Okay. So that's what uh, is uh, written here. Naming is a process to communicate and must have a way to refer to each other. Direct communication means directly send P message, uh, receive from Q the message. Indirect communication, uh, communication can be implemented by using mailboxes and ports. Okay. Synchronization can be either blocking or not blocking. Blocking means it will wait for the message to come non-blocking means it will not wait for the message to come so what happens in this case null messages will also be received by the receiver okay that is about the non-blocking and blocking same thing you can do with asynchronous as well okay asynchronous means it will wait for one process to over then it will be executed next is the buffering we will be using the buffer such as zero capacity buffer which will be having the zero capacity no capacity to keep bounded capacity there is a limit how much uh, it can accommodate and Un unbounded capacity it will accommodate as much as it is required okay the third one among the five topics is the multi-threaded programming. What do you mean by uh, thread? Thread is the basic unit of CPU. So CPU will be there. The basic unit uh, is called as thread. Many threads form a CPU. Okay. So it consists of thread ID, PC, program counter, register set, and stack. These four things are consistent in the uh, thread. And this is a very important question from exam point of view. If the process has more than one thread, it is called as multi-threaded programming. Okay, so this is one thread, this is multi-thread, this is called as multi-threaded programming, this is called as single-threaded programming. Okay, and there will be there can be different models. Uh, multi-threaded models are there, which can be either at user or kernel level. User will be in our control, mm -hmm. kernel will be in the computer's control. So this is one-to-one -one model, and this is many-to-one model, and this is many-to-many -many model. The upper part, which you see, are the user threads, and the down part is the kernel thread. The communication between them. Is implemented in the following ways okay and few more threads are used p threads are used for the api creation win32 threads are used for handling the environmental process java threads are also used uh, widely for the creating and working with the threads with a rich interface okay what are some of the issues we see uh, that is the fork issue sometimes it duplicates the process exec will sometimes replace the all the process thread can cancel before it is supposed to cancel and what is signal handling? Signal handling means whenever a process is created, it will uh, be informed via signal. And once a signal is generated, it has to be handled and signal handler will do the uh, thing which is handling the signal. And it can be of two types of signal, synchronous or asynchronous. This is with respect to time. This is with respect to the sequence. After one uh, signal, second signal will be taken into consideration. Okay.
next we have the thread pools thread pool is uh, a pool where we will be creating many threads and keeping and these threads will be uh, used whenever it is required so, okay that is called as thread pools and threaded specific data each thread will have its own specific data related to the process okay the uh, fourth topic is the process scheduling uh, so it has uh, the algorithms present okay so process scheduling uh, first we need to understand what is the cpo uh, input output uh, burst cycle okay so uh, what do you mean by uh, cpo input output uh, burst cycle so here we'll be having uh, alternatively cpu will be executed then the input output will be executed like that it will be happening okay so as you can see in this diagram here the cpu is getting executed first and then the uh, input output is happening and then again cpu is happening so it will be happening alternatively okay so this is called as uh, the process scheduling okay uh, i mean the cpu io uh, input output burst cycle this can be of two types the first one is the non preemptive uh, non preemptive means it will be having a fixed sequence or process or that can be executed and uh, non the preemptive means it will be having one uh, process which is coming in between and uh, due to that the sequence will be changed uh, there are the different scheduling criteria uh, so let's have a look at the different scheduling criteria so uh, uh, the cpu utilization is present in the scheduling criteria will be uh, scheduling based on the utilization of the cpu and how much the cpu is uh, being uh, kept as busy that is the first criteria and second is the throughput how much is the output uh, we are getting from the uh, scheduled process and turnaround time means from the start till the end how much time it's taking for the complete execution and waiting time means how much time the processes are waiting average total based on that criteria we will be scheduling and the response time means once we requested the first response how much time it took to come that is called as response time so the, uh, based on these criteria we will be uh, scheduling okay so that is the uh, main um, uh, motive behind the scheduling algorithms okay so let's have a look at the scheduling algorithms the fcfs first come first serve what do you mean by that this is the algorithm which states that the process requests first will be allocated first that means if uh, n number of process uh, request for the uh, resources p1 p2 p3 in the same order it will be uh, allocated the cpu in the same order only first p1 should be over then p2 then p3 should be over okay and code is easy and simple to understand the convoy effect is also there which means all the other process are waiting until one process gets over because first come first serve right so if the first process is very big and uh, the next process are very small they all have to wait for the first process to get over okay that is one disadvantage second is the sjf which is shortest job first that means the cpu is assigned to the process that has the least cpu time and it is optimal which gives the least waiting time because the shortest time is getting executed first so waiting time will be very uh, less here because multiple process will be executed in a short amount of time so the more number of process executed the less the waiting time and indefinite waiting time can happen so if one process has a large waiting time okay suppose p1 has a waiting time of 500 seconds and all other process comes with a uh, uh, execution time less than 500 seconds so always p1 will be left behind because other process will have less they will get executed so in that case the indefinite waiting can happen in shortest job first the other one is shortest remaining time first so whichever the process has the uh, lesser remaining time it will be executed first and both can be preemptive or non preemptive that means preemptive means in between if another new process comes that will also be taken into consideration how much time that process has left and the priority will be set accordingly non preemptive means the inside uh, in between a process cannot come okay next we have the priority scheduling so each of the process will have a priority associated with that and that priority can be set uh, by the factors externally or internally such as the time limit memory requirement or the open number of files number of open files are present based on these factors the priority will be set this is for second third fourth and fifth like that okay that is called as priority scheduling round robin scheduling is the one where we will be having each process getting equal number of time it means if there are 10 process suppose that there are 10 process each process will get three seconds to execute first three seconds for process one next three seconds for process two next three seconds for process three and so on okay like that and it will repeat and come back to the process one that is called as round robin scheduling and the turnaround time is better in the sjf and this algorithm is preemptive if a new, new process comes that will also be getting the uh, three seconds um, execution time and next we have the multi-level queue scheduling process are divided into different queues foreground and background queue 
and these queues have their own scheduling algorithms that is called as multi-level uh, queue scheduling so there will be different types of process foreground process background process and other processes each will have separate uh, scheduling algorithm that is called as multi-level queue scheduling and we have the last one which is multi-level feedback queue scheduling here what we will do the process uh, might move between the queues so suppose that there is a process p1 which is taking a lo lot of time okay p1 is taking a lot of time to execute and p2 is taking lesser time to execute so what will happen the priority will be shifted from p1 to p2 okay and when this will be uh, executed for some time then again p1 will be given the opportunity so like that a balance will be there okay along with the uh, different queues the priority will also be set like which process should be executed uh, first and which should be second so if a process is using too much cpu time it will be moved to the lower priority if a process is waiting for too long it will move to the higher priority okay so it will be like this from a lower to higher priority it will be uh, altering okay so that's all for this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one